Hi, my name is Steve Holland. I'm with Rapid Tech and Ethoskill. This is the first class in the Heat Exchanger Safety Certification Program. The Heat Exchanger Safety Certification Program, um, there's another video out on YouTube that talks about it. And then if you're in the Rapid Tech Program, um, you can see what it is. But it's a complete start to finish uh, heat exchanger safety certification that is nationally recognized. And essentially what we do is we walk technicians through a program where they can get their certification so they understand what a heat exchanger is, what its purpose is, and then how to identify failures. So this particular course, um, there's a number of classes in this course, um, but this one is what is a heat exchanger and what's its purpose. So let's go ahead and get started. So a heat exchanger serves two purposes. Everybody thinks that the heat exchanger is nothing more than the device that transfers the heat. That is true, but it's also a safety component. Why it's a safety component is because heat exchangers must be sealed. We can't have holes and we can't have leaks because we don't want flue gas that's inside of a heat exchanger to enter the home. So let's just go ahead and take a quick look at these down here. Um, these are both from condensing gas furnaces. And um, it looks like this one here um, is upside down, but whatever. It's a tubular heat exchanger. And this one is a serpentine that goes into a header, what we call a coupler box, into a secondary heat exchanger. Now, the burners on this particular furnace would have been right here. You'd have one, two, three, and they're called in-shot burners. And then the heat and the flue gas from those burners will travel. Let me just get my cursor back. And will travel, if you look down here on the right side, it'll travel through the serpentine heat exchanger. And that flue gas will then work its way into this coupler box and then go through the secondary. And then on the front of here would have been a collector box or a front cover with a vent motor assembly. So that flue gas that's produced from the fire or the exhaust must exit the building. It must exit the building a, or via the chimney or via vent pipe, um, plastic PVC or PVC Schedule 40 or Cellcor, depending on what the furnace is rated for, or a metal pipe to a chimney or a Class B vent chimney. The flue gas that's inside of these heat exchangers, whether it's in this one, whether it's in this tubular, is not supposed to enter the airspace in the home. So the heat exchanger's purpose is safety. Keep the flue gas inside the chamber until it leaves the home. Second purpose of a heat exchanger is to transfer. Transfer heat, that's it. You're buying gas, you're buying oil, you're buying propane, you may be even burning wood, whatever you're doing, you want to transfer the heated energy. So the energy that you're producing from that burning that fuel you want to transfer it through this metal. Now on these, what would happen is down here you'd have a blower. And as this heats up, there's e either a timer. Most of the furnaces are timed today and what we call, there's a time delay relay or there's a fan timer board or there's a fan timer technology built into the circuit board. But what it'll do is after so long, it automatically turns on the blower system and now you start to transfer that heat to the airspace. Years ago, if we look at this furnace here up in the picture, this guy here, you can't see the front of it, but that's an old Milwaukee thermal flow. There's two of them. Those used a bimetal fan and limit control. Don't see too many of those anymore. A little curly Q bimetal. Changed lots of them in my days. But basically what it would do is that bimetal would heat up and it would turn on a fan. That fan would then blow heat across the heat exchanger and heat up the home. So a quick recap. By the way, if you're in the Rapid Tech course, I hope you remembered to print out your supporting document so that you can fill in the information. Uh, forgot to mention that in the beginning. Number one purpose, safety. Number two, to transfer the heat. Furnace profiles. We're going to get into the different profiles of furnaces. There are two furnace profiles that we'll talk about. Here's a picture from our laboratory of all the heat exchangers that we've um, gone through. And by the way, I have a whole other cargo container full of these things. Um, but there are different types of heat exchangers that come out of different furnaces for different reasons. So for example, um, if we look at this one over here, this is a ream drum furnace and uh, it had a secondary heat exchanger and a primary. That was a condensing gas furnace. This came out of a carrier. That came out of a carrier. These are secondaries. Um, somewhere along here, I think this one here is an 80, no it isn't. Um, let's see if I can find an 80% efficient or a mid-efficient. Uh, where is, oh, right here. So this is an old 80% or mid-efficient furnace. Here's another one, here's another one, and here's another one. So those are all different types. So let's go into the furnace profiles. Right now I want you just to think about this. 
there are two styles of furnaces out there. A, either they vent to a chimney or a B vent, or in some cases a class A chimney if it's burning oil. But a B vent, class A or chimney, or it vents via PVC pipe. So let's talk about those that vent uh, to a chimney or use a smoke pipe. These furnaces right here, uh, typically your, your one profile is 80% AFUE or less. So if you study the energy changes back in 1978, 1979, somewhere in there, there was changes to our energy standards requiring manufacturers to build furnaces that were 78% efficient or greater. This one over here is a Lenox Whisper Heat. This one over here is a old Bryant um, or Carrier. I'm thinking it's a Bryant, pretty sure, because I took it apart. Whatever the case, here's what you need to know. Number one, the vent pipe is typically metal, goes to a chimney, goes to a Class B vent or Class A if it's burning hotter. All right, so that's the first thing. Second thing is it has one main heat exchanger. It doesn't have a secondary, it just has a primary. So if we look at this furnace here, you got one, two, three, four in-shot burners. Now that means you have four cells. You're going to have four cells, but you still have one primary. There's no secondary. This one here, this is a Lenox. You can't see it because they have this, this actuator, this, door, this little actuator here, and a door, and that's a draft door. And what that does is that closes on an off cycle. So when it's not calling for heat, that closes so you don't have a constant draft up the chimney. So when you look at this furnace, there's no vent motor. You look at this one, there's a vent motor. This one's atmospherically vented. It just goes up to the B vent or up to the chimney. The draft on the chimney allows the flue gas to escape the home. This one has a little vent motor. You connect the smoke pipe here, it pushes that vent motor and it'll push that flue gas or that exhaust into a chimney or into a B vent. Now, these are not to be vented outside on the exterior. 80 percenters were never designed for that unless you make modifications. That's a whole nother class, okay? There's ways to do it. We don't recommend it, but there are ways to do it. So, first, vent pipe is metal. Second, it has one main heat exchanger, and the AFUE will be below 85%. Now, some of you are going to email. I'm just going to say it so you don't email me. But, Steve, you say up here 80% AFUE, AFUE. And, by the way, for those of you that don't know what AFUE means, Annual Fuel Utilization Efficiency, all right? Because there are oil furnaces out there, some of them are rated for like 84.5% and they still vent to a chimney and there's still one primary, they don't have a secondary. That's why I wrote this, because we do have customers that have oil furnaces and we have technicians that we train on oil and propane and all that, but you might may see some furnaces that are 85% AFUE or lower. It does not have a con condensate drain or it doesn't condense. Now why doesn't it condense? because it's not a condensing gas furnace. It doesn't have a secondary condensing heat exchanger. So this one here just has a primary. It's right here behind there. This one has a primary. You can actually see the front vestibule of it. Um, so one heat exchanger. It can have multiple cells. Like this one has one cell, two cell, three cell, four cell. It's four cells, but it's still one primary. Now let's look at a condensing gas furnace. So condensing gas furnace profile is real simple. Typically vents in PVC. You'll have an exhaust and an intake. Real simple, why do you have an intake? Well, number one, you need oxygen or air. You need a spark and you need fuel. So it's, this is a sealed, this one over here, this is a sealed combustion furnace. This is an installation our company completed. Some of you are gonna ask. So, well, before I say that, we have a drain. See the drain here? It means it's a condensing gas furnace. Drain pan, that's a safety drain pan. In case the air conditioner, the humidifier on the side or the furnace would leak, it leaks into the pan, shuts it off, and now we don't get water all over people's basement. So let's talk about the heat exchanger. This one here is a serpentine. By the way, in the future classes, we get into all the different types of heat exchangers, where they fail, what to look for. That's all in the, this certification program. But this is a serpentine stainless steel. came out of an Armstrong or a Lenox, I'm guessing. And up here, your burners will be up here, okay? Pushes the gas through gets into this coupler box, gets into the secondary vent motor assembly, then pushes it out the exhaust. Now this heat exchanger is not out of this furnace. This heat exchanger right here, this is a Goodman or a Daikin or a um, Goodman Daikin or a Mana heat exchanger style. Tubular goes through here, goes into the secondary vent motor assembly, pushes it out the exhaust. 
One other thing I want to share with you. Typically on high efficient condensing gas furnaces, the flame is always up on top. The fire's up here and it pulls it down. On 80% or older furnaces, the burners are usually down low. Let's go back and look. The burners are right here and the fire goes up. So that's another characteristic to watch for. So let's look at these 90% uh, condensing gas furnaces and up because we can get all the way up to 98 AFUE today. I want to make you guys understand something really, really quick. AFUE does not mean that's how efficient the furnace is. That's not combustion efficient. That's the annual fuel utilization efficiency. That's a rating that the federal government has put together. And right down here is the energy guide. So let's go ahead and look at this. Number one, characteristics of a 90% AFUE or a condensing gas furnace, it typically vents in PVC. And it'll vent through the roof or out the sidewall. The vent piping material you'll see out there, um, you must look at the manufacturer's recommendation to see if they approve cell core. Some manufacturers in some countries or municipalities do not approve cell core and it has to be Schedule 40. So look at that, but it's typically PVC. Second thing, it has one main heat exchanger and a second one called a secondary. Here's your primary, here's your secondary. Again, multiple cells. You know, you could have three cells, but it all forms one primary. That's the big hot one, the one that gets really hot. And this is the secondary where it condenses. The AFUE will be above 90. So if you look at this little sticker and it says 92.3 or it says 94.1, guarantee you it's a condensing gas high efficient furnace. And the last thing is it will condense. It has a drain line. So any of these furnaces that have a drain line in the PVC, that's your different profiles. Why is this important for technicians to understand? Well, first off, we want technicians to know the difference in the furnaces. Two, we want them to know the differences in the types of materials. You know, if a technician calls me, we want to create in this industry and in this program some standardization. So if a guy calls me up, one of my techs, and says, Steve, I'm on a heat exchanger. This is what I've got. I'm going to ask him questions like this. What kind of furnace? Is it a condensing gas furnace or 80 percenter? Is it a stainless steel heat exchanger? Does it have rings? Is it tubular? I'm going to ask all those questions. What type of header does it have? So those are the questions I'm going to ask, and that's what we teach in this course. So those are your two profiles, 80 percent and lower. And again, could be 84, 85 if you're talking oil, but 90 and 90% and up. So this concludes the first class heat exchanger safety course 101. If you are in the Rapid Tech program, take your quiz and you will then advance to your next class. If you're watching this out on the YouTube, well, you can reach me at ethoskill at gmail.com or you can visit heatexchangersafety.com and at that site you should be able to find a link on the Rapid Tech or under our courses and you should be able to contact me via there and sign up for the program. Now somebody asked a while ago, why ethoskill? What does that mean? Ethos is the root of ethics, okay? The word that defines ethics and skill um, obviously is pretty simple, skills, okay? So ethoskill is the company that owns Rapid Tech and we don't believe in just teaching technicians skills. We believe in teaching them ethics, and that's why this heat exchanger safety course is, is also an ethical course because we do get into communication with the homeowner when it's appropriate to talk about cracked heat exchangers. There's a lot of scare tactics out there today, so we just want technicians to be educated. If you want a quick view of some of the other stuff we offer, I'll just show you really quick. You know, we get into the different types of primary heat exchangers. This is the second course, um, furnace safety. We get into, you know, the life of HVAC equipment. We'll get into properly installed systems, causes of heat exchanger failures, and how to inspect them. We even get into all the types of secondaries. This course goes on and on. The parts of a heat exchanger, where they fail, you know, areas of concern, what to look for. So these are all in the course. So with that said, I don't want to bore you too much with that. But again, my name is Steve Holland with Rapid Tech. I hope you enjoyed this course. And until next time, thank you.